the ancient Tenebrae service, from which our service tonight is derived, dates back to the early years of the church. Coming from the Latin word meaning shadows, Tenebrae depicts, through the extinguishing of candles and the dimming of lights in the church, the flight of the disciples and the approaching crucifixion and death of our Lord. It is interesting to note the abundant presence of examples of the elements of human nature and human weakness in the events immediately preceding the crucifixion. Consider, for instance, the betrayal of Judas for a few coins, the failure of the disciples to stay awake while Jesus prayed in the garden, Peter's loss of temper in striking out at the high priest's slave with his sword, Peter's denial of Jesus, the jealousy on the part of the chief priests that caused them to take action against Jesus in the first place, Pilate's apparent lack of courage to stand up for a man he felt to be innocent, and finally, the very human desire of Jesus himself to escape the crucifixion. And even today, it is not our own human weakness that causes us to betray, deny, convict, and crucify Christ, in effect, if not in fact. In our efforts to be better Christians, we should all be made aware of this factor in our relationship with Christ so that we might learn to recognize it when it appears. The extinguishing of the candles and the gradual dimming of the lights as the several portions of the story are read symbolize the flight of the disciples and the approaching hour of crucifixion. The moment of total darkness recalls the hours Christ was in the tomb. The return of the light is prophetic of the Easter soon to dawn. Think and pray on the meaning of this service to you. God, look with mercy upon your family gathered here, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, given into sinful hands, and suffered the death upon the cross. Strengthen our faith and forgive our betrayals as we enter the way of his passion. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Song of the Suffering Servant. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond that of man, and his appearance beyond that of mortals. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. 
For those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, no appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity. One of those from whom men hid their faces spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was for our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. His stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of the people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked, a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. If he gives his life an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for the offenses. The betrayal. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came up to Jesus and said, Where do you wish us to prepare the Passover supper for you? He said, Go to this man in the city and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. I am to celebrate the Passover with my disciples in your house. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover supper. When it grew dark, he reclined at table with the twelve. In the course of the meal, he said, I give you my word, one of you is about to betray me. Distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He replied, The man who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will hand me over. <clears throat> the Son of Man is departing, as scripture says of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for him if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, spoke. Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, It is you who have said it. the Son of God, who will deliver the Lord to death, who will be the one who must bear the awful curse. Who will it be, O God? Who will it be? Who will be the pawn of Satan? Who will be the traitor to Christ the Lord? Who will sell his soul for the life of God's own Son? Who will it be, O God? 
who will it be? Who will bring the kiss of death to Christ? Who will give the Savior to sinful men? Who will send the Lord on his road of pain and shame? I pray, O oh God, that it not be me. Let us pray. Almighty Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your Son to be born of woman and to die on a cross, so that through the obedience of one man, the estrangement might be dissolved for all. Guide our minds by his truth and strengthen our lives by the example of his death, that we may love you in union with you in the kingdom of your promise. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and told the apostles, sit down here while I go over there and pray. Taking along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to feel grieved and deeply distressed. Then he told them, my heart is nearly broken with sorrow. Remain here and stay awake with me. And moving forward a little, he fell on his face, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Still, let it be as you would have it, not as I. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you were not able to watch with me for a single hour? Watch and pray, so that you may not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he walked, went away and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot pass from me without drinking it, your will be done. When he came back again, he found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them once more and went away a third time, speaking the same words. Finally, he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? The hour has come, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand.
Could you not watch with me one hour? How strange to hear such words from such a man, a man so self-sufficient, so strong of mind and soul. What need has he for solace of companionship? Could you not watch with me one hour? Once more he cries aloud his anguished plea, that all that lies before him may not be his to bear. But yet he takes the cup and drinks it willingly. Could you not watch with me one hour? The time has come and all his prayers are done. He meets the task with courage, but somehow he has changed. Perhaps he has learned the loneliness of saviorhood. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, you have given the human race Jesus Christ our Savior as a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life on the cross. Help us bear witness to you by following his example of suffering and make us worthy to share in his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Arrest While he was still speaking, a crowd came, led by the man named Judas, one of the twelve. He approached Jesus to embrace him. Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the companions of Jesus saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we use the sword? One of them went so far as to strike the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Jesus said in answer to their question, Enough. Then he touched the ear and healed the man. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers, the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him. Am I a criminal that you come out after me with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, and you raised a, you never raised a hand against me. But this is your hour, the triumph of darkness. The incident is over, and peace rules the garden again. The normal sounds of night have banished every trace of shouted curse. The scuffling mob has long since gone, and the disciples have fled in fear. Most who were here will soon forget this night, but a certain slave touches his ear in wonder mixed with gratitude, and he will not soon forget. Oh, mm -hmm. 
You gave the peoples the role as the inheritance of your only son. You crowned him as the king of Zion, your holy city, and gave him your church to be his bride. As he proclaims the law of your eternal kingdom, may we serve him faithfully and so share his royal power forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Denial They led him away under arrest and brought him to the house of the high priest, while Peter followed at a distance. Later, they lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and were sitting beside it, and Peter sat among them. A servant girl saw him sitting in the light of the fire. She gazed at him intently, then said, This man was with him. He denied the fact, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them too. But Peter said, No, sir, not I. About an hour after that, another spoke more insistently. This man was certainly with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter responded, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. At that very moment, he was saying this, A rooster crowed. The Lord turned around and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word that the Lord had spoken to him. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. They asked me if I knew him. What else could I say? For if I had said I knew him, they'd kill me right away. And how then could I save him? Body rent from soul. But after I denied him time and time again, my eyes began to open. I saw how wrong I had been. It wasn't for his rescue that I claimed him not. The reason for my action was fear of what men thought. But judge me not too harshly if my ways seem grim. How often has the cock crowed since you first learned of him? Let us pray. Lord God, you desire to keep from us your indignation, and so did not spare your Son, Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our sins. We are your prodigal children, but confessing our sins, we come back to you. Embrace us that we may rejoice in your mercy, together with your Christ, your beloved Son. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. The trial. As soon as morning dawned, the chief priest formed a conference with the elders and the scribes, including the entire Sanhedrin, and binding Jesus, they led him off and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, so you say. 
Then the chief priests accused him of many things. But Pilate questioned him again, Have you no answer? See what they are charging against you? Still, Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate wondered. But at the feast he used to release to them one prisoner for whom they asked, and there was one named Barabbas, confined with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The shouting mob proceeded to request the usual privilege for them. Pilate replied to them, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him. However, the chief priest stirred up the crowd to prefer Barabbas be released to them. Then Pilate came back at them again. Then what shall I do with the one you shall call king of the Jews? But again they shouted, Crucify him! Pilate asked him, Why? What wrong did he commit? But they cried out the more loudly, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barnabas, Barabbas, for them, and after flogging Jesus, gave them over to be crucified. Let us pray. All powerful and eternal God, for proclaiming the truth, your Son Jesus Christ is condemned to death by crucifixion. Stir up your love in our hearts so that we might be ever faithful to all that you have told us and fear nothing more than the, the loss of your friendship through sin. We pray this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
the carrying of the cross. As they led him away, they laid hold of one Simon the Cyrenian, who was coming in from the fields. They put a cross beam on Simon's shoulder for him to carry along behind Jesus. The great crowd of people followed him, including women who beat their breasts and lamented over him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and your children. The days are coming when they will say, Happy are the sterile, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin saying to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. If they do these things in the green wood, what will happen in the dry? How often had I longed to take the children of Jerusalem and gather them to me, but they refused. But now these women weep for me, and my heart mourns for them, mourns for their sorrows that will come. I comfort those who seek to solace me. How gentle can you be? suffering and death of your Son. Strengthen and protect us in our weakness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Crucifixion. Two others who were criminals were led along with him to be crucified. When they came to Skull Place, as it was called, they crucified him there, and the criminals as well, one on his right and the other on his left. They divided his garments, rolling dice for them. The people stood there watching. 
And the leaders kept jeering at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also made fun of him, coming forward to offer him their sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was an inscription over his head, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging in the crucifixion blasphemed him, Aren't you the Messiah? Then save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked him, Have you no fear of God, seeing you are under the same sentence? We deserve it, after all. We are only paying the price for what we've done, but this man has done nothing wrong. He then said, Jesus, remember me when you enter upon your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, this day will be with me, this day you will be with me in paradise. It was now around midday, and darkness came over the whole land until mid-afternoon with an eclipse of the sun. The curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two. Jesus uttered a loud cry and said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. After he said this, he expired.
the burial. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to take him away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths and according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus there. No more the heat, no more the nagging thirst, no more the taunts of jeering mob, no more the scathing sting of whip or club, no more the vicious raking pain of nails and cross. Only loneliness remains. He takes it through the door of death unwillingly, but with a depth of understanding only he could know. He lived for us, he died for us, and now he knows the loneliness of his death was no greater than the loneliness of his life. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Father, in your plan of salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, accepted the cross and freed us from the power of the enemy. May we come to share the glory of his, his resurrection, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, on the edge of sadness when all seemed lost, you restored to us the Savior we thought defeated and conquered. Help us, we beg you, so to empty ourselves of self-concern that we might see your, your hand in every failure and your victory in every defeat. These things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. <laughs>